It's 8.10 a.m. on July 24th, 2019. Last night was another night and a bunch of dreams that all got erased. Um, and the ones that I got, I don't even feel like um, reading the images that I got. And mostly because I kind of feel like the source of these, I don't know, I... But um, I feel like the source is questionable. The stuff that's coming up, I I just feel like it's mind control. I feel like I'm being played a little bit. So maybe if I had gotten the full dreams, I might have a different point of view. Um, I would really like to know the whole meaning of fish. I want to get. I want to understand what is meant by these people when they talk about fish. I know that Brett Bowman was a central person that they considered to be a fish. But who else is a fish? Is it a bunch of people they have locked up in hospitals? Are they are they locked up in hospitals? Is that what fish are? Or is it less specific than that? Um I mean the thing I know about Brett was that he was set up that this Okay, I don't know what recorded and what did, didn't, if anything recorded. This phone is um, set up not to work properly. So it rings and it makes noise, but I really, I can't very well answer it. I can barely use it to make phone calls with. It's useless for photography movies. It's stuck. It's been stuck on night mode. I can't figure out how to get it off. I've actually tried to research it and have not figured out how to do it. All kinds of other problems with this phone, like problem after problem after problem. It, that touch screen doesn't even work properly. Like I have to like do this to make the touch screen work. So I realize that this is a cheap phone and so forth, but I think it's like if this phone was really this bad, I don't think it ever would have made it into distribution. Like if, if all of these phones were this bad, I think this phone was set up to be bad. And so what happened was the phone that I'm actually using to video this um, was a Samsung that I was using. And it, the screen got blasted on it, but it wasn't blasted out completely. It still kind of half works. So then I went to the phone place to replace it. And I just got the bottom end phone because most of the time bottom end phones are serviceable phones. You know, it's just whatever their cheapest phone was. That was this. This isn't even serviceable. It doesn't work. Um, but... What happened was when the first version that I got, I hadn't really used it yet. And then that screen got blasted. So I think that the screens are being blasted with directed energy hits. So I took it back a week later and I had to exchange it. And that, you know, was a way, you know, took up a bunch of my time. And a lot of, a lot of stuff is about taking up my time. Um, but when I finally got the new phone... It just was really awful. So I think that they specially got me this phone. This was um, Metro PCS. It was T-Mobile. So this is through T-Mobile. Um, I don't know who... One of the problems with this corruption is... Okay, so my point, my assertion is that this phone was given to me already with a bunch of, you know, spyware and um, other types of software that's not just spyware but software that's intended to make my life miserable hell just trying to use my phone and get basic stuff done. Uh, and so this gets repeated with all kinds of other things, or it can just happen as your stuff gets so old and you can't afford to replace it. So it's these kind constant microaggressions trying to create this, you know, these micro traumas and, you know, they add up after a while. You just can't get basic stuff done. That's one of the, you know daily, hourly, you know, every minute kind of weapons, weaponry or attacks, assaults that get used on me. Just very micro level trauma, micro level frustrations. Um, going up to very big level, you know, every, everything they can possibly get away with. But anyway, one of the problems is not being able to follow exactly who the source of the corruption is like it could be t-mobile 
or it could be just the store that I bought it from. It could be the re the you know the version of T-Mobile that's running through Portland, which was called Metro PCS. They changed their name, you know. Or it could be just. But the thing about it is, it doesn't really matter that much because what happens is everybody's protecting each other. So even when you're protecting the criminals, if you're by lying, um, it kind of makes you just that bad. Um, Xfinity is another example because Xfinity, sometimes my internet, you know, I pay for, we, if we pay for internet or something, it'll go down in ways that I know it's gone down deliberately just to block my access. Um, so tracing that to its source, like, is it being blocked here at this level or is it being blocked somewhere else or whatever? But if, if you are insisting that something can't happen when it actually can and does happen, um, you're protecting the criminals. So when you're protecting the criminals, you're involved in a cover-up of a crime. So that happens a lot. You know, whether just because you're not the one actually doing the crime, if you're lying about the crime in order to cover it up, you're also part of the crime. So that's my cool pad. And anyway... Um, I was talking about fish, so that was sort of a, unfortunately, kind of successful diversion, but it's okay, it's not permanent. Um, are fish people locked up in hospitals? You know, like my Aunt Mildred, who was murdered in a hospital with tuberculosis um, and never should have been in the hospital in the first place. I'm sure she shouldn't have been in the hospital in the first place. Or are they locked up with um, other ways, like... You know, now I see so much as being done with directed energy weapons. So people's brains are beamed or their bodies are beamed. They're made ill with directed energy. Um, but the concept of fish, I can see, goes back hundreds of years. So what was it before this? That's that. What is what is it about this situation that makes somebody a fish? What is the defining characteristics of what? The people who are involved in this crime call fish. The stuff about the thing I hear about the basketball hoop made out of a drawer is interesting because I feel like that's something I've seen in my life at some point, but I don't remember when. That is like a drawer with the bottom out of it. And so you just nail it to a pole and it becomes a basketball hoop. And you just take a, you know, a drawer with, you know, it becomes a homemade basketball hoop. Almost nothing in here, else in here. Other than, okay, wait, where is the two? Oh, no. Um, I got two names. Well, this one, someone is permitted to kill others. So I write dance lessons. Someone is permitted to kill others. And then I write my brother and Alan Buckwright. And I don't mean that my brother and Alan Buckwright are necessarily permitted to kill others. I just remember the names seemed like they were relevant to my dreams. Um, I'm not saying they are, and I'm not saying they aren't. Um, but this is, I think, some type of um, effort to show the nature of the game. Now, in the dream, it seemed like I found out that I was one of the people who was permitted to kill others, but then I started to make arguments about why it's not a very effective strategy. Um, so I have discerned that there are people in this quote-unquote game who are permitted to kill others. Um, but I'm not sure how they go about it. I'm not sure if the people who are quote-unquote permitted to kill others are the ones who are actually pushing the triggers or the buttons and doing the job of the killing. I kind of don't think they are. Um, Michael Payne is obviously one of these people. Um, I think Mike Patton is one of these people. I think Toby Vale is one of these people. And these people have like a type of immunity. Um, but are they actually, like in my case, I'm not making up a kill list. If I did, I'd put all the people on it that they're not allowed to kill. That's part of the whole problem here. <laughs> part of the big problem with killing. Like, I mean, 
it's not like the normal criminal justice system where you're actually using... I mean, I'm not saying that people should run around killing people in general. I'm actually anti-death penalty and all of that stuff. But if you... If that's the only way you can prevent someone from killing other people, if the only way that you can prevent someone from harming other people is to kill them, you would automatically want to kill the biggest killers first, right? You would go right up to the top of the stack and kill the biggest killers. And then if they're forcing other people to kill, then that solves a big problem. It's like killing the head of the beast, right? Beheading the beast rather than cutting off its, you know, paw or its finger, or its tail, or something like that. But that's not how this this is permitted to work. You're not permitted because this is not permit. This is not intended to end. That's the whole thing. If you really flip back and take a big trip up into the sky and look at this game from the top view, it's not really designed to end. If it was designed to end, then you would, you know, go straight to the head and kill the head of this beast. But you're not allowed to do that. And so then they also complicate it further by giving some people immunity. And even though you might have immunity, it doesn't mean you really have immunity. I mean, um, nobody really has immunity, especially in a situation like this. It's just, you know, how sneaky are people going to be or, you know. Um, but even so, even just having a protection um, makes it dangerous because you're actually protecting killers. You're not protecting. So there might be, you know, some type of strategy that might possibly be effective and that might be what they're trying to get me to, to do. But it just doesn't make sense. If you really want to end a crime, the way to end the crime would be to figure out the source of all the problems and to, to cut that part out of it rather than especially in a very hierarchical situation like this, um, rather than start at the bottom and work your way up. That just doesn't make sense if you really want to end something. So I don't know what to say about that. Alan Buckwright is interesting because this is a kid, this is another kid that went to school with me from, I think, kindergarten. I think Alan probably, if he didn't start in kindergarten, I know he was in school with me by third grade. But he might have been in school with me since kindergarten, all the way up through Eureka High School, and then dropped off the face of the earth, as far as I can tell. My brother and Alan both were baseball players. Um, but a lot of the people involved in this game are really lay low. You don't see them online a lot and stuff, so... Um. So what I didn't write down is at the end of this dream, writing these dreams and so forth, I um, I had Gene Genie, David Bowie song in my head, Gene Genie. So um, maybe I'll look at that.